Hi guys, and welcome to another iOS development tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at modal view controllers or how to display view controllers modally. Now, you may have seen different applications on your phone that come standard with iOS, um, such as you know you, the stocks application and sometimes certain settings applications behavior is, uh, behave like this as well and the the behavior I'm referring to is essentially oftentimes you'll see a button sometimes it's like an info button like I have up on screen in my simulator and when you tap that button it does like this flip transition effect um, and it displays certain information when you hit OK it goes right back so really what you need to understand here is that this is being achieved by displaying a second view controller modally and so when we say modally what we're doing is we're basically applying an effect and f changing the view controller that is currently visible to the user to a different view controller so let's see how we can implement this very easily using Xcode so I am going to move my simulator off screen and we'll start by creating a new project I'm gonna just select single view application and we're gonna hit next I'm gonna, it's going to ask me what my application should be called and I'll just um, call this modal app. Um, I am not going to be using storyboards because we really don't need that and I'm going to use automatic reference counting and I am going to just hit next It'll of course ask me where I'd like to save my application and I'll just do it here on my desktop and just create it real quick. Okay, we'll let Xcode finish up. It's going to probably do some scanning and indexing so let me expand this project. It likes to do that as soon as you expand it and here we go it's indexed and as it's finishing that I've just noticed that you know it's because it's a single view application we really don't have very many files and what we have here of course is a view controller or sort of the, the first view controller that's going to be loaded it also comes with a nib file and our first stops of course going to be in here and what we're going to do is we're going to drag a UI navigation bar um, onto our view and so if you can't find it of course just type in navigation bar in your objects library and we don't want the navigation controller what we want is the navigation bar so we'll just drag that on to our view and we can of course set a title in here so let's go ahead and do that that's just a small little thing so we'll just call it my app real quick okay so with that done what we're going to do next is we are going to add a um, a bar button item right so this is uh, not quite a button but a UI bar button item so you'll see here in the description it says it represents an item on a UI toolbar or a UI navigation um, item object. So what we're going to do is drag this up to the top and set this to be done. And if you select this and you've got your um, attributes inspector open, you'll see the style is set to bordered and that's exactly what we want. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to right click and set ace actually before I do that what I actually want to do is let's see if we can do this via our assistant editor I'm just gonna open this up I'm gonna right click and drag a connection here to my uh, view controllers header file and I'm gonna set an action and I'm going to call this one show info so the idea here of course being that this is like a credits type of I um, deal where um, you know when the user clicks on this particular button it shows a few credits about who the developer was and things like that so we'll just hit connect and that IB action gets created and that is perfect we'll do a command S and I am going to go back to my standard editor and what I might do is actually just change the title here to say uh, info so there we have there we have it okay fantastic so now what we've got of course is um, a mechanism where we've tied we've got a selector that's tied to show info which is a method that we're going to implement in our view controller file so let me jump into the implementation file and you'll see that the outline of this methods already there or the sort of framework so a couple things that we need to do here actually before I jump in and write any code let's create the view controller that will be displayed when the user clicks on that info button so to do that we just right click on the project I'm gonna say new file and uh, I'm going to select an uh, iOS Cocoa Touch Objective C class. Hit next, and I'm just going to call this Info View Controller. I do want the nib file, so I'm going to leave that checked, and then hit next. It's going to ask me where I like it. I'll just create it in that same exact folder, and that's perfect. So we've got this going now, right? So let's do maybe some quick little changes here in our Info View Controller's nib file. 
maybe we'll set this view color to be uh, the background to be one of the standard ones. We'll just set it to scroll view and we'll also drag a UI label so it's nice and easy for us to see. So we'll change this to we'll just say app developed or we'll just say app credits. So it's I don't have to type too much. Okay. Great. With that done, we'll just center that real quick so it looks clean. And we also will need a round rect button that we'll leave on the screen. And I'm going to type into it and say done. Okay. Now, we do actually need to tie this button to an IB action, but I'm going to come back and do that in just a second here. So what we want to do for now is jump back into our view controllers um, header file. And over there, I am going to include this new file that we just created, which was info view controller. We'll include its header file, command s to save. The reason we're doing that is because we need to create an instance of that um, class an object so we would need to create an info view controller object and then sort of pass that modally to um, or, or rather and then display that modally so what we'll do is here is we'll say first let's create a, a info view controller object and the way we would do that is we just say info view controller whoop and type try that again so we'll say caps locks malfunctioning here info view controller and we're just gonna call this info and to the standard alloc and init info view controller alloc and we'll just do an init on it great command us to save that so once that's done what we want to do then, then do is define our transition style. So it turns out that when you want to display another view controller modally, you can actually select from one of four transition styles. So we'll say define our transition style and what we're going to do is we're going to say info dot um, what do we say modal transition style and we'll set that value to be UI modal transition style and you'll see that there's actually four that we can go to so there's modal transition style cover vertical modal transition style cross dissolve modal transition style flip horizontal which is the one that I think the stocks application uses and uh, modal transition style partial curl and this is sort of a page curl effect it's kinda neat um, I'll try to usually stick to the uh, modal transition style flip horizontal but you are welcome to try that um, try one of the other styles as well and experiment with them and see which one you like best. Alright, so with this done, we present our view controller. So what we would do here is we say self dot present sorry, self dot display whoop so what do I what am I missing here I want to set this to self dot um, whoop I know what the problem was I'm just trying to access it as a property what I really want to do is self present model view controller and we're gonna say UI view controller and that UI view controller is of course gonna be the info view controller that we just created and do we want it to be animated yes of course that's what gives it the nice transition and I'm gonna hit command s to save it okay so at this point we've actually got all the code we need to um, have that view controller be displayed modally but we want to do one more cleanup item which is we need a way to get back to the original view controller and that's why we had created this button in the info view controllers nip file um, and so what we'll want to do here of course is right click or let's open up our assistant editor first and we're going to create an IB action if that comes up as outlet, just change that to action. We're just going to call it dismiss view controller. Right? And we'll hit connect. And then we'll implement some code to essentially be able to dismiss our view controller. So let me go back to our standard editor. We don't need that double view. And I'm going to come down here and just say self dismiss view controller 
dismiss modal view controller animated and this time also we're gonna set the animated uh, boolean value to be yes command s to save and we are now good to go so let's run our application and see what we get give it a couple seconds here and it's doing a little bit of compilation almost done linking it up here we go just about finished All right. one of the things I need to probably do is minimize the amount of applications I've got running when um, I'm doing these tutorials and that's probably going to help speed that up. Okay, so we've got our standard, our first view controller, which was our view controller. We've got our info button. When I hit that button, a transition occurs, and I get to see the info view controller where I would normally put app credits. Maybe there's setting values that you could save here. Whatever you want to do in this second view controller, I can then hit done, and the same animation is applied, and it goes right back to where I see my first view controller. Now, if you remember uh, the um, the application that I initially showed you had a, a slightly different button. You often see an info button. Um, you know, this struct, this design is a little bit um, more blocky, if you want to call it that. So, if you want to actually change this around a little bit, you certainly can do that. So, let's just stop the application real quick. We're going to go back into our view controller's nib file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, delete this for now, and then we'll reconnect it later. So, what I'll do here is I'll right-click this and just disconnect this for now and if you were to take a look at just the the objects that are part of our view you'll notice that I've got a bar button item called info well this, that's what this was it was a UI bar button item now if I were to delete this right I could delete that and I could then implement a round rect button which you might think is no better but I can actually select this and then in my utilities um, uh, views attributes inspector I can change this round rect to a info light okay so what I can then do is I can just drag this on to my UI navigation bar and let that go now we have to hook this up correctly to our files owner and here's something that sometimes people get a little confused with um, is if you were to right click this you'll notice that you can only set the selector value and let me show you what happens if you try to do it from here so you can select it here it allows you to select the method everything's good we are good to go let's run the app and you'll see that doesn't quite work sometimes so we'll let this uh, finish up real quick here build succeeded running the app I hit the info button nothing happens so what's going on well the problem is we tried to use a round rec button within our UI navigation bar so let's stop this application and I'll show you exactly what's happened so what we need to do here is we tried to create or connect this um, selector to our show info method uh, but that doesn't quite work so what we have to do is go ahead let's go ahead and disconnect that to get it back to its normal state and if I were to expand this you'll see that what's happened is my button has been dropped into a bar button item so what I would really need to do is I need to select try to click into my bar button item and then click it again and that brings up the actual UI button now I can right click it and then use my standard move which is to use the touch up inside connect that to files owner and the show info method do a command s to save and run this application again and you're gonna see that this time it does work correctly and we are in fact able to see that uh, modal view controller and see that uh, transition occur the way we want it to so it says it's running the app but here it comes and we'll give it a couple seconds and here we go this time when I hit it it shows up just fine hit done so that's the little tip or secret that you need to remember when you're working with UI bar button items that you're trying to drag on to a UI navigation bar just remember that um, if you try to use a round rack button it will drop it into a UI bar button item and so you have to click twice to sort of get to the actual button and then connect its um, uh, touch up inside method to the correct method that you want right so thanks for watching I hope this was helpful and hopes you uh, hope this allows you to implement um, a nice little about us page it's always nice to see your applications running on hardware and it's even more awesome to um, 
you know, uh, really put some credits out there for your work so you know when somebody launches that and takes a look at it, you know, they know who which companies created your applications and also sometimes people will use that particular view controller to, uh, you know, promote some of the other apps that they've got in the store and things like that. Anyway, good luck developing and I hope um, this tutorial was helpful for you. I also happen to notice that there is a warning here and that's nothing to be worried about. So let me just do one last thing here. The reason I'm getting this warning is because when I select this, uh, the UI bar button item that our round rec button got added into has automatically grabbed a style of plane and that is sort of a warning they don't um, iOS doesn't really like that or interface builder doesn't like that so if you were to switch this to bordered or done that would reduce the number of warnings if you do a command s and a command b that warning um, even that last warning will disappear so that's basically all that was um, but hopefully this has been helpful thanks for watching again bye bye